So we're going to start out by looking more closely at the phospholipid bilayer, which forms the cell membrane. And we usually call this the fluid mosaic model. And the reason it's called the fluid mosaic model is because it is a fluid and flexible um, organization of the cell membrane structures in order to allow separate fluid compartments on either side, but also to allow flexibility and fluidity, um, which needs uh, to be present in order for substances to move across that membrane. So we don't want like a gate or a rigid fixed structure separating these two areas, but we really want um, a nice mosaic model. Okay, so let's start by drawing the most important structures, which are the phospholipids. And we described our phospholipid as being amphipathic. So we know that they have these fatty acid tails that are facing inward and these <clears throat> hydrophilic glycerol backbones that are facing outwards. So this is the extracellular fluid, which is outside the cell. This is the intracellular fluid, which is inside the cell or the cytosol. And so we'll start by describing the first structure of the phospholipid bilayer, which are the phospholipids themselves. So these form the plasma membrane. We talk about the plasma membrane as being amphipathic for one. And let's just describe what that means. That means that the heads of these phospholipids are hydrophilic or lipophobic. Those mean the same thing. So they prefer water and they are afraid of fat. We also spoke about the tails as being lipophilic. Lipo. Or hydrophobic. So they prefer fats and they are afraid of water. So this is an area inside the center of the phospholipid bilayer that is non-aqueous, non-aqueous, meaning that water cannot exist here. Okay. And so that was the first property of the plasma membrane. The second property is the fact that it allows fluidity and flexibility. Fluidity and flexibility. And again, we don't want a rigid fixed membrane. We want something that is malleable, that is flexible, that is fluid. And it also makes the membrane impermeable to water. This non-aqueous center means that water cannot exist in this region. And so nothing that is aqueous or like a, uh, like a philic, um, can move through the membrane. So these are polar substances, which we'll give some examples later, or water itself. So water cannot exist in here, means it cannot cross the membrane. Okay, let's describe some of our other structures that are present here. So we know that there are integral proteins. And integral proteins can be one of two types. They can be either transmembrane, such as this one here, meaning it spans the entire membrane, or they can be one-sided. 
such as this one, which is only located on one side of the membrane, or this one over here. These are usually fixed permanently to the membrane. And that's really important. Transmembrane uh, integral proteins um, are typically things like receptors, things like transporters, and they really help with the cell identification. If a cell cannot uptake things like glucose, it really loses its identity, it really loses its function, it will die. So if the transmembrane or one-sided integral proteins dissociate, the cell dies. So they're really important. Um, it's really important that they stay fixed permanently to the membrane. Um, then we also have another type of protein, peripheral proteins. Now, peripheral proteins are located on the cytosolic side of the membrane. So they're on the cytosolic side. And these can easily dissociate. As needed. So these are things like anchoring proteins that can move around in the membrane, they can go into organelles, they can be uh, things like the cytochrome complexes that we saw in the mitochondria. So they can move all around the cell. Um, but they're sometimes located on the peripheral side of the cell membrane or the cytosolic side, okay? But importantly, they can move around unlike our integral proteins. The next structure we encounter in the cell membrane is cholesterol. Now, cholesterol are these ring-like structures that are located throughout the membrane. They're really important for giving the membrane um, flexibility, and fluidity as well. And they help to break up the rigid nature of the membrane. So we got cholesterol. And so they increase fluidity. They decrease rigidity or crystallization. Okay, and what that means is again, we don't want a rigid, hard, uh, inflexible cell membrane. We want this to be very malleable, very fluid, and cholesterol helps in that um, in that cause. They also prevent the membrane from being leaky. So they prevent membrane leakage. And that's because they're fats. So we've looked at cholesterol as an example of one of our uh, biomolecules of fats. And they are not going to interact very well with water. And so if we have lots of big chunks of cholesterol in the membrane, that's gonna help preventing water from moving from side to side. So they also help to um, prevent membrane liquid leakage because they are impermeable to water, okay? All right, now the last class of molecules we'll look at in the cell membrane are carbohydrates. And carbohydrates are basically these glucose branches that exist either on fats or on protein. So they can be on fats, which are our phospholipids. We can have some carbs branching off here, or they can be on proteins. So when they're on fats, we call them glycolipids. When they're on proteins, we call them glycoproteins. All right, and together these can be different types of things. These can be signaling molecules, these can be transporters or carriers. So 
So they are bound to lipids or proteins. And they're important in cell identification. So we see them as cell identifiers. They're important in cell tagging, cell transport, anything like that. So they have quite a few different functions um, that I'm sure we'll go on to give examples of um, in other systems. Okay. So these are the structures that form the phospholipid bilayer or the plasma membrane. The most important of these is going to be your phospholipids, which help to establish the non-aqueous versus aqueous environments because of the amphipathic nature of these phospholipids. Okay, but we have lots of other things going on, as you can see. Really important for the cell's function, and these can vary depending on the location of the cell, some of the unique 